After receiving almost 25,000 complaints about Diversity's Black Lives Matters inspired dance routine on ITV's Britain's Got Talent, TV regulator Ofcom have said that they are not going to be going forward in an investigation. Yet the scale of the complaint, making Diversity's performance the second most complained about TV moment in history, has really revealed worrying public sentiment. Audiences say that they love diversity when it comes to feeling good, but when it comes to vocalising injustice, which is faced by many of the people in diversity, the group are told to shut up and just dance. So, I want to know, when it comes to the British public, why do we think that they took such a big offence at this particular performance and are the public only interested in black people when it comes to entertainment value, but not when it comes to really respecting our rights as people? I think they took offence simply because it's harder to ignore when it's on a mainstream TV. So it's just kind of like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's easy to say, oh, I didn't see that news article or I didn't see that YouTube clip or anything like that. Yeah. But if you come in onto their favourite Saturday night show, well, I think the show comes on Saturday night whenever it comes on, you come yeah. onto their favourite family Saturday, Saturday night show, then you they can't ignore it. They've actually now seen it. And then at that point, it's almost like a choice has to be made of, of what, the, what they're going to do now that they have that knowledge. And I think of them don't want to make that choice but just simply because the same reasons why we haven't spoken about not spoken of why racism or um, racial inequality hasn't been a mainstream topic in British media is because people don't want to deal with it they either don't want to deal with the realities of it or they just kind of want to hide their hands so they don't want to have to admit to anything that maybe they've done wrong in the past now to answer your second question about their interest in black people is that you know the value for the entertainment yeah. I don't know and I, I, I know it's a bit <laughs> weird for me to say but I'm saying I don't know and I say I don't know because I feel like I'd have to be one of them to really know what it is that they want from us particularly now history does suggest to me that possibly they only want us for entertainment and things like that when we speak out about other things like for example if I'm thinking about like Dave's Brit Brit Awards performance, or if I think about you know that whole Stormzy controversy yeah. and getting his words jumbled, they weren't happy about that, and they love Stormzy and Dave, but they weren't happy as soon as they spoke out about racial things. So then that would make me believe that they only like us for entertainment value. But once again, I don't know if I can certainly say it that that's what it is. <laughs> mm. I'm kind of I'm with you on the on the first point that you made because I <laughs> I think you know firstly what diversity did was a great performance I think it was yeah. really wholesome I think it was fun for all the family Luanda of I course think... you thought it was wholesome <laughs> <laughs> fun for the whole family <laughs> it was fun for all the family I thought it was perfect and very PG like it was great and <laughs> It was a message of love and unity and if anyone actually paid attention to the words in the poem they would understand that their message mm -hmm. was love and unity so let's be yeah. really honest about the backlash you know because this performance very tastefully um displayed what we've been dealing with for the past six months and we all yeah. know if they had only made reference to the coronavirus alone that there would be no outrage so yep. i kind of i find it funny when i see this many people get bent out of shape because they're shedding light on like you said anisa something that people would rather ignore they're continuing a conversation mm -hmm. um about something that people don't want to talk about but it's funny yeah. to me because most of the people who are in such uproar about this, most of the people that get in uproar when people make references in arts or in conversations um, to black issues, that you are in uproar about being reminded of something that we're never allowed to forget. Mm. So it just makes me think, you do realise that by seeing it or by talking about it, it doesn't actually mean that you have to experience it. Whereas black people can't change the channel if there's something that we don't like. We can't call off calm and complain about systemic racism. Like you do understand that just because you watch the diversity of performance, you don't actually have to deal with the issues that the black community deal with. It kind of feels like they don't get that. Yeah. I had a real issue with people saying it was political because, mm. I mean, yes, 
First of all, Black Lives Matter and the fact of saying that Black Lives Matter enough not to be shown a lot of aggression or violence or to be killed for just existing. That's a human right. But if we talk about it from a political sense where we're saying that there should be better structures in place, a lot of the acts that are on Britain's Got Talent I feel like I'm in the similar vein. So I watch Britain's Got Talent, like my nieces love it as well. Like it is family entertainment, but they have acts on there that talk about climate change, that talk about disabilities Ooh. in young people. They talk about bullying. So they have acts that will come up. There was a group that David Williams put through straight to the finals and they were a group of disabled children and had various medical conditions. And they were talking about, you know, they, we should be accepted too. They had a climate change and people talking about the state of the world and the rubbish that's in the sea and where we're all headed I'm like why is no one writing to off come about that because that's just <laughs> as much a human right yes. as a political thing like they're both mm -hmm. the yeah. same but when you see about black people suddenly it's just like you know I want five minutes when I don't want to have to deal with the real world and that is a direct quote from someone like on Twitter featured in the Daily Mail and I, like you said Luanda we can't let go of it for five minutes like only when we're in safe spaces around family or in our home we not have to be we might not have to be constantly reminded about the difficulties that we face but generally i'm like if people are dealing with this 24 7 it's just a sh sign of privilege and shame for someone to really come out and say that so mm. I, I actually find it shocking that 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 people were so outraged by what the diversity's performance but they weren't outraged about what happens many weeks ago with that reporter on bbc i just find it like it baffles oh, yeah. my mind that baffles yes. my mind <laughs> they didn't even get, I bet they didn't even get a tenth of the complaints yeah, for someone saying point. the N-word really live on television. <laughs> but so when not. someone does something to say that we deserve rights and people should be protected. Or, like you said, it's just like basically a retelling of this year. Mm. And they're up and yeah. arms. They're just like, someone's using the most offensive word that you could probably say to a person, a black person of colour. But that one was like... Nah. <laughs> okay. Honestly, like, I'm with you. Um, it's just it's just shocking to me. We're not upset at a racial slur, but we're upset yeah. that people were popping and locking in the name of a good cause. I, I, I can't believe it. I'm so serious. Popping and locking in the it name just, of a good so cause. Weird. I love it. <laughs> this, this is I'm just silly. Pleased. And then I loved. I personally loved how Alicia handled it when I saw her come through that little necklace with the, the BLM, BLM necklace. Thought, She's such so a queen. Here for Alicia. I, I love her. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Yes, one of my issues as well is that I saw in the Daily Mail and it said that they felt that the performance was incit inciting racial division. I don't know how, just... but let's say we go down that path. Let's say it is inciting racial division, even though Ashley Banjo says that he was trying to promote unity. What can we do as black people to promote unity? Because when we peacefully protest in the Black Lives Matter, you don't want that. Okay. If we marry into like British society to show unity like Megan, okay, no, we don't want that. If we work, live and pay taxes, well, with the Rindros scandal, that's not enough and we can send you back, so no, not that. If we work in the NHS massively as minority ethnics and we help to make people in this country better, yeah, we don't even get featured when we see a clap for the carers. Like, where mm. is the unity that you want us to show? Because it yeah. seems that if we do it through a creative dance, is it? Yeah. What, it's too what? much. I it's too much. Like, I don't know where <laughs> Before they... Before Watershed, it's, it's how dare you? <laughs> it's just, it honestly confuses me. Yeah, yeah. It is really frustrating. And I think, especially because I do keep up a lot with, um, you know, award shows and things like that. And I remember specifically yeah. in 2017, um, when the Las Vegas shooting happened. And that was, that was seriously horrific. I don't, do you guys remember that? Oh, not really. What? Yes, so I think that was the one. Was that the one in the when there was the outdoor concert and it was someone from the yes. window? Yes. Yes, yeah. that's the one. Mm -hmm. So it was a mm -hmm. country music festival, actually. And the man shot from the window for over 10 minutes, Sophie. And he actually mm -hmm. killed over 50 people and injured hundreds. And of course, everyone felt that like globally because it was so horrific. But obviously, yeah. as it was at a country music festival, the country music industry felt it the most. And then at the following Grammys, there was um, four country performers who actually performed a song called Tears in Heaven and had the names and faces of all the victims mm. behind them on the stage. And it was, to me, it was just as beautiful and just as relevant as what diversity did on the stage. But of course, they didn't receive even a droplet 
of the backlash yeah. that diversity mm. received. So it is very, it's not, it's not, so it's upsetting, but it's unsurprising to see that this type of backlash is only reserved for black issues. Because yeah. when we talk about, you know, anyone else that who who's who's experiencing injustice or who is a victim, we're allowed to be on these big platforms. Like in terms of music, there's really not a bigger platform that you get that's bigger than the Grammys. So, yeah, the you know, we can't even two step on ITV without 25,000 plus people <laughs> being up in arms about it. It's really ridiculous. Well, I think it's also important to highlight that even though there were 25,000 complaints, like the greater proportion of people, like 5 million people watched. So mm. Ashley Banjo has said there are a lot of people who have stopped him in the street, sent him messages. He says the 25,000 is probably like a snippet, but mm -hmm. I think it's important in these moments to really see the underbelly of what's going on in society because people want to pretend like oh we're also accepting the multicultural i'm like well no we're all not <laughs> no. because like we said yeah. it's the second most complained about thing in in tv history and especially Which is crazy. I want to talk, yeah i wanted to specifically talk as well about black entertainers because the creative industry music dance that's supposed to be the place that we draw on all of our personal experiences and usually that's congratulated so even talking about the emmys adele like every do you see that meme when um adele mentioned that she had divorced her husband and people were just like i can't wait for the next album it's going to be so good now oh, yeah, that's out of order so. but it that's is well known nice. that <laughs> adele makes very good albums from heartbreak her last album won grammy of the year like which is the most prestigious award but when it comes to beyonce this is someone who also uses the things going on in her life, her pain, racism, things experienced in her family as a way to influence her music. But as her music has become more racial, more politicized, she has been shut out from the major awards. So it seems like they want us to be entertainers, but just not in the way that is going to upset anybody. And when it comes to, let's say, Lewis Hamilton or Anthony Joshua, they're happy to be entertained by them. But when they have stood out in terms of Black Lives Matter, they've gotten a lot of backlash. So it just seems like they just want to be a specific type of entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that... Um... I definitely think, I don't know if it's a big thing, but it's definitely a thing to me that I sometimes think the reason why they backlash at some of these big black celebrities, because it's almost like a how dare you? Like, we let you get this far. <laughs> yeah, we let you get this far. We let you be so successful, and now you're thrown in our face racism. But it's, it's like, I think they really, I, I honestly think it's a how dare you do that? Like, how dare you? And I think that's exactly what we saw with diversity. It's like, we, we made you winners and changed your lot's life, and now you want to come back yeah. on the stage you won on and tell us that we're racist mm. i'm not having it that's how i felt like it went down <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i can definitely see that perspective for sure <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> i just, i mean i it's i think for me like it's it's just really sad because you have you know people who can say wild things but you're i'm seeing you know Ashley Banjo was close to tears on the radio and they're saying that they're getting all this abuse from not even saying anything that crazy. It's ridiculous how controversial a statement like Black Lives Matter is to say Black yeah. Lives Matter, to say Black Lives Matter as well, Black Lives Matter as much. That mm -hmm. That is really causing... 25,000 people to complain and you could I could say so many other things but I all I you know you know so I don't know it's it's kind of just ridiculous to watch I think for me yeah and yeah. I just really hope that we as black people don't bite into the narrative that we're often told in society that we can be entertainers like we're great as yeah. footballers or sportsmen or musicians but you know we don't really go into other spheres because I think it's time for us to start breaking down some of those barriers as well and it's just the stereotype they've said it's proven black people aren't the fastest or the strongest but when people believe that that's why kids are trying to be sportsmen more than anything else or yeah. go into music and things like that and like the stereotype of Asians being more intelligent or Chinese people being more intelligent when they're just kind of like well no that's not a thing you can't be born more so than any other race so I really hope that we don't bite into this rubbish that people say about us being entertainers no 100% I definitely agree um, with you on that I definitely I think it's this whole idea like we can do everything apart from be educated do you know what I mean by that like we can't be the politicians or we can't mm. be the CEOs but yeah. we can we, we could go out and be an athlete mm. 
And you can sing, but you're not going to manage the singer. <laughs> You know, you're not going to yes. own the record label. Oh. Yes. You can, like, you know, hand in an article, but you're not going to own the newspaper. Like, don't be silly. Yeah. <laughs>